when you read all four Gospels in unison, the full three-dimensional picture comes out because here Luke gives us a much, gives us many, many more details than we had from Matthew or Mark. So for example, very quickly from Mark, it just says, as Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew casting an net into the sea for they are fishermen. Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And they immediately left their, and they immediately left their nets and they followed him. Done. That's it. That's all you get. But in Luke, you get this whole story about let down the nets, go out into the deep. We have caught nothing. Now we've caught something. And we have Simon Peter now falling down at Jesus' knees. Depart from me, I'm a sinful man. And then it ends with, and then they followed him. So whereas Mark gives us very, very few details and gets right to the point, Luke provides us with this additional story. And in here, he spends, Luke spends a lot of time talking about Simon. And Simon, obviously, who is, will become Peter, all right? And here, the way that he talks about him is Peter comes to the forefront. And so he talks about the men that Jesus had seen, but then he says, Simon appeared and answered him, Master, we have toiled all night. Simon saw it and fell down at Jesus' knees. And so Jesus says to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be the fishers of men. And so you see in Luke a lot more detail. And more than that, you see that he speaks a lot about Peter. Whereas in Mark, you'll see that Mark is a little bit more condemning of Peter. And he highlights, Mark highlights a lot more of what Peter had done that was not necessarily good especially him denouncing Christ when he was at the trials uh, and then fleeing when, the, when Jesus was arrested. So here we have Luke who plays more on what good Simon has done and Simon who will emerge as this leader. And in the other gospels like Mark, you have a different tone. So reading them together gives us this three-dimensional picture. And the last thing I wanted to say is... There is a small detail here that comes out. Jesus was teaching. And then he turns to Simon and he says, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. So he uses the term deep. And some of the spiritual fathers, some of the holy fathers, like St. Ambrose, see this as entering into the depth of the mystery of who God is. So the lesson, and the lesson that he, St. Ambrose pulls from this is that many times we are in a situation where we don't necessarily know what the human answer is. We don't know whether we should take a new job or if we're pregnant, should we have this child or what should I do with my father who now is terminally ill? And we have, these, we have these questions that the human mind is not able to answer. And they're very difficult. And so the lesson here that St. Ambrose gives in interpreting launch out into the deep, because the end result of this is positive, means that sometimes what we have to do, as uh, one of the famous Protestant theologians Kierkegaard says, sometimes we just have to let God be God. And we are in such a rush, and especially in this modern age, we are in a rush to look for human answers to divine questions. And many times we cannot be provided that answer. The doctor can't really tell you what to do with your father. You're going to get different answers if you are now pregnant and you don't know what to do with the child. You're going to get different answers. Or... Do I now take this job and put my family in jeopardy? Or will I be successful at this job? The human mind cannot provide you the answers. The only one who can provide you the answers is launching out into the deep where it is risky and where it is difficult. And as St. Paul says, where it is very foolish because we think with our minds. And sometimes we have to launch into that depth and we have to trust 
that God will reveal to us what is the proper decision. I speak out of experience because many times in my life, I have had a, I've had these situations, certainly not the pregnancy one, but I've had these situations where there has been no good answer to what it was that I was supposed to do. And that just left me in the quiet time where God could speak to me, which is very, very difficult for me because as a man of science and engineering, I want to provide myself that answer. Because again, this is what I grew up with with my father. You are the master of your destiny, the captain of your soul. You decide what is right. And the answer is, that is not correct. So sorry, Dad. I got I, I to gotta fault you on that one. And that answer came to me in the quietness of prayer. In whatever way that prayer is that you do. Not maybe for some it's reading Psalms, maybe for some it's looking at scripture, and maybe for some it's just as the penitent man with the publican and the Pharisee did, you just fall on your knees and you just say, I need help and guidance. And this is what Ambrose is talking about here when it says, sometimes you have to launch into the deep because Simon's answer is our answer. I've spent all night what more is going to come from this? Logic tells me that nothing more will come from this. And this is what we have to overcome sometimes in those difficult decisions is trust that God will provide us the answer. Not necessarily the answer that you want. Many times for me, it was not the answer I thought that was correct for with my mind. But in Revelation, it became, I became clear to me that that was the right decision.